Last week we learned how to calculate residuals. Um, today I'm going to show you how to make a residual plot. Um, so first of all, I want to be able to calculate the residuals for every house in this data set. Um, so let's start off by making a column for the predicted price. Um, so I'm going to edit the formula. I'm going to do 213, that's my slope, times the square footage. That's what I'm using to predict plus my intercept uh, is minus 59,369. Okay, so that's my prediction equation. So when I hit apply, it's gonna calculate the predicted value for each house in this data set. And then remember, the definition of a residual is it's the actual value, so in this case, the actual price minus the predicted price. Okay, so now I've calculated the residual for each house. Okay, so a residual plot, you put your residuals on the y-axis, and usually your explanatory variable stays on the x-axis. So we'll do it that way. So you can sort of imagine what we've done here is we've basically taken our regression line and pulled it down till it was horizontal, and that becomes the new axis, right? So like if we wanna highlight a point, we can see this is above the line, so it has a positive residual, so it's above zero in this graph. This one is below the line, it has a negative residual, so it's below zero in that graph. And sometimes you can see patterns in the residual plot that are hard to see otherwise. So for example here, I see that it seems like there's a little bit of a flare or like a funnel shape in this graph. Um, so that means that your predictions seem to be more accurate on the low end of the scale and less accurate on the high end. So sometimes you can see patterns like that in the residual plot. So let's look at another one. This is looking at um, Broadway and how much money Broadway shows make in millions, and then um, we're looking at it by season. There's other variables in the graph too, but um, we're just going to look and see how the gross changes based on season. Okay, so if we add a line to this, it looks pretty good, right? We can see our points are pretty close to the line. Um, R squared, we'll talk more about how to interpret that later, but it is just the correlation squared. So anytime your correlation, anytime your R squared is this high, um, that means that your points must fall very close to the line, right? And that's what we want. We want our prediction errors to be small. Um, but this, is this actually a good fit? So I'm gonna make a residual plot here. So my residual plot, I'm gonna put my residuals on the y-axis and I'm gonna keep my explanatory variable on the x-axis. So here I can tell there's definitely a non-linear pattern going on, right? These are all negative residuals. So if you have negative residuals, that means your points are below the line, that the predicted value was higher than the actual value. Um, and here, if you have your points all with positive residuals, that means your predicted values were too low. So it doesn't seem like you're just randomly over underestimating. It seems like there's a pattern here that you're not taking into account. So if something like this happens um, as you're working on your project, um, let me know because we'd want to consider a different model in this case. 